Hello, welcome back to our channel and today's video is going to be about why rats make the very best of pets. Rats like Pickle and Chutney here really do make the very best of pets. Now when I'm at schools talking about, especially talking about owls, one thing I always say to the children and the pupils is, don't ever get a pet owl. Pet owls, probably the worst pets you can get. Don't listen to Harry Potter and his friends. Pet rats, these guys are brilliant. Now, I think dogs are the best pets, but I think dogs are part of your family for sure. As a, a kind of bedroom sized pet for sure, pet rats are the best pets. The strange thing is, most parents won't let their children have pet rats. And there's two reasons for that, isn't there? It's a rat, Ugh. It's something we subconsciously associate with dirt, filth and germs, just like we do fleas, flies, vultures and cockroaches. Very strange. And the other reason, <gasps> the other reason is, they've got this, haven't they? This amazing tail. They use their tail for balance and climbing, and they also use it to help keep cool in the summer. So because it's naked, they can increase the blood flow to their tail, to the skin, and it helps cool them down. But this tail, which is so amazing and so useful to the rat, to most parents, it's something disgusting and scary. It either looks like some horrible worm or indeed a snake. And for some reason, that puts people off them. Ironically, the same parents that say to their children, "Ugh, it's a disgusting rat, in the next turn would go, oh, look at that, a squirrel, a squirrel, is very much similar to a rat, except it's got a lovely furry tail, and for some reason, that makes all the difference to us. These guys here, Pickle and Chutney, we're gonna tell you why they make the best pets. We're gonna tell you positives and negatives about them. Don't fool you guys. But let me just start by saying, they're not just super, super intelligent. They're on par with a dog for the stuff these guys can actually learn. You can train them to do tricks and trials and mazes. They'll learn their name, they'll come to their name. They are super intelligent animals indeed. And for someone that wants a true pet that they can work with, bond with, and do stuff with, it doesn't really get much better than a pet rat. They're not just clever, they're emotional beings. They have feelings. Tests have proven that they gen genuinely have feelings. They're affectionate. They can feel remorse. They can learn from positive and negative episodes in their life. Best of all though, for your small child, unlike the hamster, pet rats don't bite. The only time I've been ever nipped, and I mean just a nip from a rat, is I've lifted up her female on her young just to have a look at her babies. And she's nipped me to kind of say, get back, I'm protecting them. Look at these guys here sociable animals they live in family groups in the wild and they're more than happy to accept you as part of their family group let's contrast that to the furry pet that you seem happy to buy your child the hamster now i don't care if we're talking syrian hamsters or russian hamsters hamsters by their very nature are loners now people keep russian hamsters together in the wild hamsters live on their own Hamsters, when they meet another hamster, only do one of two things. They fight each other, or if it's a boy and a girl at the right time, they have a bit of fun together, very, very briefly indeed. Why would a hamster want to be your pet? Let's think about it. An animal that comes out and is petted and handled, because in the wild, hamsters really don't like their own kind. Why on earth would they like another species to be around them as their friend? They don't really. Every child I know that's kept a pet hamster, every child I know, every person I know, and we've had a lot of hamsters in our house, every person I know, at some point or another, has been bitten by their hamster. Rats are just so very, very different. They actually don't think, oh no, they're coming to get me out of my house. Rats think, oh, fantastic, we're gonna go out and do something fun with our other mate who's not even a rat. Look at them. When I go to schools 
with a whole team of animals. It can be a team from birds of prey to creepy crawlies, reptiles, ten rex, look that one up, and rats. I can honestly say there's only one species in the morning, in the early hours, while I'm loading up my animals and loading up the van, that when I open their enclosure, actually go, yes, fantastic, we're going out for the day, we're going to meet children. And they run at my arm and they're excited. They know when their travel box nearby, and I open that cage up in the morning, it's not about food, it's not about drink, I'm not gonna clean them out, I'm going to take them out for the day. And I absolutely love it. I've got animals like insects and reptiles that probably don't think much about it at all. They used to be in handles. I've probably got other animals that think, oh, crikey, we're not going to school again, are we? These guys, they love an adventure. If these are children's pets, when you come home from school, your children come home from school, pretty much a nocturnal animal, but they'll wake up. Fun is here. We're going to come out. We're going to do stuff. Literally, we're going to get out to play. You come home from school and you open your hamster's cage. This is what it does. Oh, rolls on its back, goes back to sleep. Give it a little poke, don't you? You give that hamster a little poke to wake it up because it's your new pet. Being excited, like, oh, get off, I'm asleep. Oh, get away, human. Ooh. And you poke it a bit harder. You go, come on, Hammy, come on, out you come, out you come. I'm home from school, you're my new pet, I want to play with you. You poke your finger in again. Milliseconds later, searing pain in the end of your finger as the hamster decides it's going back to sleep, it's going to bite you to get rid of you. And of course your reaction is only one thing, isn't it? Ah! For one and a half seconds, your hamster can fly across your bedroom. Don't get a pet hamster. Show your parents this video. Tell them that this tail helps cool the rat down. It helps it climb. It's a thing of beauty and amazement. It feels great to touch. And of course, pet rats unlike wild rats, are really, really clean. There's way less germs on these rats than anybody watching this video, that's a fact. Now, wild rats are different, they're the same thing, they're the same thing. In fact, wild rats are just as loving to each other. The same animal as this, really. But fancy rats, pet rats, they don't carry in your house a couple of diseases that rats can carry. Now, it's been proved pretty recently that the bubonic plague probably wasn't really spread much by rats after all. It was actually probably spread by those other verminous creatures, humans, spreading it from human to human. Rats would have played a part, but it turns out probably wasn't their fault at all. It's us dirty animals that spread the plague more than anything else. Unfortunately, they do spread wheels disease, and that is or can be fatal to humans. So we actually don't want too many wild rats living around our property. They cause serious damage by gnawing away at our property and they can spread diseases that can still harm us. You fancy pet rats, they're not gonna have those things. Don't worry, these guys are super clean. This is Stewie, he's a young male rat. Now, as soon as they get to this age, he's a few weeks old now, he's probably coming up for 10 weeks, maybe not quite. You can see he's a boy, but when they get this big for sure. Which is best? Boys or girls? I think I've always found with rats and ferrets, quite unrelated animals, with rats and ferrets, I've always found the boys obviously grow bigger. Well, they're not obvious to you, maybe, but the boys grow bigger. And I've always found that with rats like Stewie here and ferrets, the boys are more chilled out. They're a bit more fun. They're kind of just laid back creatures. But with both species, rats and ferrets, the boys have their own odour. Now ferrets, boy ferrets, hobs, they're quite strong. They have their own musk. And rats smell a little bit more ratty than the females do for sure. But I think it's worth it because I do like the boys. They're just so chilled out. But Pickle and Chutney, they're the girls that I work with regularly. They come to all my schools at the moment. They're great. Girl rats are great. Boy rats are great. And I think really it comes down to personal preference. One thing I must say as much as your pet rat will bond with you, it'll want to be a family member with you, it'll treat you as a friend, realistically, you're not going to be with your rat 24-7. Most of us work, most of us have stuff to do, most of us have to go to school, one or the other. Always, without fail, get at least two rats. Don't get them on their own. They will inevitably spend too much time alone 
and they're a sociable species. Rats, I've already said, have feelings and they're intelligent. It's a fact that rats can suffer from depression, seriously. They can be happy and they can be sad. A rat that spends a lot of time on its own can get depressed. That's not good and that's not fair. So I always get at least two. Unless you're hell-bent on breeding your rats, please get two of the same sex. And so make a decision whether you want boys or girls, or if you don't care, and get two of the same sex. Because if you've got males and females together, they'll breed and breed and breed. That means if you're keeping them together endlessly, the females are never left alone by the boys. They're always in a breeding cycle. If you want to breed them, think about why. Why do you want to breed your rats? There's the cuteness factor, isn't there? We'll, we'll sort of come to that. Baby rats are cute. This guy's only a youngster, he's a few weeks old. But do you want your female to constantly be breeding? Do you want to constantly be finding homes for your pet rats? Do you want hundreds of rats? Because that's what'll happen. So think about that. Personally, if it's a pet, don't go down the breeding route. The other reason to breed them, of course, is for feeding other animals because they're a species that's bred in their millions to feed other animals such as my snakes and birds of prey. Maybe you want to breed them for that reason because you can breed them more ethically than the rats that you're buying that are bred on a much more commercial scale. Maybe your friends want some and you want to breed them but then what? What happens when you've had the first litter? You're splitting up your two rats so have a good think about that. These guys here they're so friendly and what we find even rats that don't get handled very often you can just pick them up honestly they're so super friendly as i've already said their intelligence can be on par with a dog their emotions are vast they are an emotional animal so always think about that when you're keeping your rats because they're so intelligent they want to do stuff don't they they really do that's why they're such good pets they're just desperate to come out and be with you and do stuff when they're not with you think about their housing the bigger the cage, the better. My rats here, have a look in the top one. My two school rats here, have a look at these guys. Their housing is medium size. Perfectly fine for two rats if those rats are out pretty much every day. Lower down, there's a, a larger rat cage, commercially purchased rat cage. It's about twice the size. And you can put swings and hammocks and things in there to make it more interesting. Now, interestingly, Keep some of it the same for them, it's their home. But by all means, switch up their other stuff in there, they can play, whether it's ladders or ropes. Stuff that's new. Rats are neophobic. Wild rats are more so than pet rats. That means they're frightened of new things. It's their lifesaver in the wild. Because in the wild, we're forever trying to poison them and trap them and kill them off. Because they're neophobic, super suspicious about new stuff, it often saves their lives. Think about substrate. Different people we're having a drink try break. different things. Have a look, we're having a drink break. Water, incredibly important for your rats. Don't ever let their water bowls get dirty or run dry. Rats drink a lot and they need a daily supply of water, absolutely. They drink more than you think. Substrate, wood shavings, sawdust, commercial um, dry pelleted paper, rat bedding. You can try all different things. We've recently tried a compressed coir uh, substrate which I've been trying for my reptiles and it seems perfect for rats. Very low dust, very absorbent. Clean them out regularly. If your rats are smelly, you haven't cleaned them out enough. They'll smell of wee if you don't clean them out enough, the ammonia in their wee. If you're just cleaning them out when you feel like it, that's not good enough. At least weekly, you'll probably find you might want to change some of it twice weekly and they'll hardly smell at all, as long as you look after them. You can buy commercial Rat feed, like you would a bag of hamster food. They'll eat anything, pretty much. We feed a mixture of cheap, dry dog food, complete diet. Cheap because it tends to have a more cereal base, mixed in with a hamster or rat feed. And you can also buy commercial rat pellets, which are a balanced diet for them. And of course, treats. You don't want them to get too fat. Don't feed them burgers and sausages and things like that. Our junk food, because it's junk food for them. But have a research online. The different things, a little bit of apple maybe, a little bit of carrot. There's a lots of things they love as treats. And you'll be their best friend if you give them treats. Rats spend 30 to 40% of their time grooming themselves. That's how clean they are. And if you're someone they love and are affectionate to, they'll lick and groom you as well as a sign of affection. 
Rats like you to play with them. They like cuddles. Rats love cuddles. And they love being tickled. And I actually read a fact not that long ago that said they love being tickled so much they actually giggle and purr, but the pitch that they do it is too high for human ears. But you can detect it with a bat detector. You can detect rat, not bats, rats chuckling and giggling when you tickle them. How cool is that? What a fantastic, fantastic creature they absolutely are. Whiskers for feeling, big ears for listening, pretty poor eyesight, but a sense of smell. Oh, it's done a poo. A sense of smell that by many is said to be as good as, if not exceeding, the sense of smell on a dog. So the nose and the ears, the whiskers, fantastic. Hearing, feeling, smelling. Their eyes, they can see movement at some distance, but they haven't got a very good vision and certainly better close up than far away. He's doing a poo, look at that. Now, that poo was a little bit sticky, if I'm honest. Slightly nervous poo, really. Most of their poos, very dry, hardly smell. It makes them such a great pet. Look at this animal. If you're thinking of getting your children a pet hamster, think again. Because the rat will love your child, it'll want to play and come out and have fun with your child. And I'm, this is, they're not just for children, believe me. And it'll be a true friend. I know a lady, a school teacher, that has, I think, 72 hamsters. Crazy, because if she hadn't got all of those hamsters, the whole herd of them, and had just two pet rats, her life would be better. They really are that good. We're going to pop this guy away, but before we do, let's just tell you the negatives of them. So negative number one, if you buy a pet rat or any pet for your small child, remember that child that promised you he or she would clean out and take every care of their new pet is a liar. Children tell lies. In two weeks time, that animal will not be good. He'd done another poo in my, it's doing a wee now, look at this. Someone's got to clean up this mess, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you who the mess would be cleaned up by. If I was a child and I'd had this rat for two weeks or more, mum, not dad, mum. So be aware, mums. Be aware, mums. <laughs> it's going to be your job to clean up that mess after two weeks. Downside number one: it's actually on my fingers and it's a sloppy poo. You disgust me. Downside number two. The average lifespan of a pet rat, it doesn't matter how much you treat, teach it, how much you train it, you disgust me, how much it loves you, hello. The downside is they only average about a two and a half year lifespan. Not very long at all. But they're worth the sadness. They'll break your heart, but they're worth it because they're a special pet. Really, look into them. If you want a pet for your children or yourself that's a cuddly tactile pet, not like my other exotic animals, Consider a pet rat every time. They're fantastic. Anyway, I need a wet wipe. Ugh. And pet rats, fancy rats, come in all different colours. How fantastic is that? For me, the black and brown ones take the biscuit. They just look a bit more wild type. But look at this guy here. Juvenile rats are the cutest. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon for our Christmas special as well.